What's good, well, it's the greatest producer from the Lone Star State, June James. And I'm finna show you guys how I made Yosemite by Travis Scott on Hot New Hip Hop. Atlanta, you know, the vibe is real turned up right now. And you know, the people who were doing anything in Atlanta at the time was Gunna and Lil Baby, and they still doing anything, they actually doing anything more. So that Dice was a record of mine that I mean, a record that I heard that I really liked, you know. And I was um, in the studio at the time with Rich Homie Quan, and um, I got a dope guitar player by the name of Sheldon Ferguson. And we was just knocking out tracks, knocking out tracks, and we just knocked out a track with Rich Homie with the same kind of like, you know, with the like, guitar acoustic vibe. And I just wanted to just, you know, keep that vibe going. And so that very night, you know, I just made a bunch of those, like, just, you know, 128, 130 BPM with acoustic guitars, you know, that live 808 with it, you know, and um, Yosemite, the beat for Yosemite just happened to be one of the, the babies that came out that, you know, that night in the situation. So I took the beat back from Atlanta to Houston and, you know, touched it up some more and um, that was really that, you know, the vibe was just, was just really just, we just tried to take it to another level. We was, you know, we was trying to do something different, more, more instrumental, more like, you know, musical, more melodic, but at the same time laid back and that's just really what came from the situation. But I was inspired by Sold Out Date. Shout out to Turbo. My baby was just born. We, um, I had, um, I got a crib in Atlanta. I still got a crib in Atlanta to this day. But um, me and my girl, you know, we had um, got an apartment in, in, um, back in Houston. So I was just back in Houston a whole lot. And um, I, I really don't go out in my city, you know, no cap, but I'm really a legend in my city. So I really just can't go out like that all the time. You know, I can't go and announce. So, um, but anyway, my partner was DJing that night and he was DJing a private, you know, listening party for Travis Scott. And so I was just like, man, fuck it. I'm just going to pull up, you know, and just, see what it is. So I pulled up. Now Daniel wasn't finna go. I had a fresh Gucci fit I was finna wear. Like it was fresh, like real fresh. Shout out to my boy LT, cause he lakes me up. It's, he got designer by the way. And um, he um, he came through with a nice Gucci fit. And I was ironing it, didn't know the material. I burnt a hole in the shirt and I was not finna go. I was like, you know, I'm really, I'm a fresh dude. As you can see, I'm real fresh. And I didn't want to go out there looking crazy, especially the first time eating Travis Scott. So she's like, nah, my girl was like, no, nah, you need to go. You never know it's gonna come out of the situation. So I went. And I remember my partner was promoting the whole event. I didn't even know that, but it's just, that's just how God works. You never know. You know. Your producers take that chance, leave the studio, go out there, and, you know, meet people. You know, don't be afraid of network because you never know what's gonna come from it. So anyway, I pull up to the studio. I mean, not the studio, my bad, to the club, and I'm um, boom, my partner DJing. So he, I'm in the DJ booth, vibing with him, vibing. We smoking. We, then my partner, you know, he promoting. We vibing, we vibing. Then boom, Travis comes in, and I tell my partner who promoting, I'm like, bro, introduce me to dude. I don't want no picture with him. I don't want none of that cat. I just want to be able to, you know give him these records I got for him. And you know, in the past, I've been trying to link up with him, you know, be my partner Brett, shout out to Brett, cause he got me this interview. A lot of other people tried to put me in the door with him, you know, it wasn't shaking and stuff, but like I, I had him right then and there. So I finally got to meet him and it was crazy because, you know, just off the strength of Brett and people like that, talking me, talking me up to do, he knew who I was. So he was like, oh yeah, I know you every day we live, you know, you make key to the street solution and stuff. Man, yeah, I'm gonna give you my personal email. I was, I was shook, I was like, okay, he, you know, he fucking with me. So I was like, bro, I don't want no picture. You know, like I said, I don't want no picture. Just, you know, give me an email. So he gave me the email. I sent him a five pack. It's five beats. A month later, you know, I'm actually emailing your homie Quan another pack. I checked my email a month later after that situation. And him and Sycamore, his manager, they both was like, hey, you made the album. So that's how I made the album. Now, if I didn't go out, if I, if I, let, you know, let, if I didn't go out that night, man, I wouldn't have got that placement. So thank God for that. You know what I'm saying? I fell in love with the song. But how I am with the stuff I produce, I really be just focus on the next thing. So after that happened, I was like, cool, bet. Now I gotta go harder. You know, I gotta make a bigger record than this because, you know, I didn't raise the stakes so high. So the record dope and that stuff, cool, but I'm just so focused on doing the next thing that, you know, it was really like, you know, not bittersweet, but just, you know, a good notch on the belt and a blessing at the same time. Man, my beats are known for being like real, real, real up-tempo and real, real melodic. Like, I'm, I feel like I'm one of the first cats to bring that, like, bring that, like, you know, that real musical side back to the swag. You know, when I was doing stuff with Lucci, you know, doing stuff with NBA Youngboy and all that stuff like that. I kind of bring the pianos, bring that, you know, saxophones, live, live instrumentation, you know, different swag for the game. I'm from, I'm from Texas, I'm from Houston, so we do a lot of players. We players over there, so we do a lot of smooth shit, you know what I'm saying? But we don't, me, you know, being from the South, we also fuck with the trap, so it's a mix between smooth and this trap. So, you know, you're gonna hear a lot of guitars, you're gonna hear a lot of pianos, but you, you know, you also gonna hear the 808. You know, I like sampling too, so I just, you know, we trying to just come with different sauces every year, because everybody, you know, this shit like fashion. Shit change every year. You gotta, you know, keep up with the times. My first inspiration, like I said, I wanted guitars. I really wanted to do something live with some guitars. So like I said, I had my partner Sheldon Ferguson. 
He's a real dope uh, guitar player from South Carolina, but you know, he stays in Atlanta. He does, a, we've done a lot of records together and we're gonna keep making more. He came in and we just had a jam session. I just told him what key I wanted, um, the vibe I wanted, and he just went, you know, went from there and we recorded it and you know, cut the loop and I just dumped it on Fruit Loop. So once I got the loop, you know what I'm saying, and I'm gonna play it for y'all, you know what I'm saying, I really knew from there where I wanted to go with it. Really, everything started with the guitar. Everything started with the guitar was the foundation for the whole beat. Shout out to Sheldon again. Yeah, that was really that was really the foundation of it. And then after that, you know, got to fill them holes in. So we added the flute. I really added the flute to it after that. You using the Omnisphere, shout out to Soundscape, all the people that Omnisphere, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. we uh, used the Lotus flute, you know, there you go. and we uh, backdoored it. We added that, so I'm playing by itself. You know, a little airy flute, a little something freaky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is catch the air that put on, put on top of it. So you added those two together, we had. And that's how, it, you know, it come on. Exactly, they correlate real well. They mess real well. So with the guitar, you know, being there and the flute being there, I really didn't have to, like, you know, go crazy with just adding more sounds and, you know, overbearing. Like, a lot of, you know, a lot of times, less is more. So all I did after that was just add, like, a little bell. Bells going in and out, you know, just to, you know, fill in them pockets, you know what I'm saying? So that's all we did. People who just, and they just think, think that just cluttering and stacking and stacking it. Nah, man, sometimes it's really about the, the key, the timing. You gotta leave them some space to rap on, man. You ever heard somebody, man, that beat so hard, I can't even rap on it? That's because the beat is too hard for to rap on. And it's just real facts. So, you know, after that, we had the cool bell. Real low. As far as instruments go, that was it. After that, it's my favorite part. It's the drums. I love doing the drums. I love added ways, I love hi-hats. I like, you know, doing freaky stuff with it. And on my hi-hats, hi -hats, I like to put this effect on it called effect tricks. You know, it makes it, you know, you can put the, you know, get effect tricks and you can put a little reverse, reverse um, effect on it. It just makes the hi-hat just do little freaky stuff. So I'm gonna play the hi-hat for y'all so y'all see what I'm talking about. You know, you hear that little twitch to it. You know, something like, we added the 808 after that, you know what I'm saying? And really with the 808, I started in a, a low key, for, I mean a high key for the first four bars, and for the second four, I went down low. So if you notice, I'm gonna play the last four of the first four. Then it goes. Add the hi hat. Add some kick to it too. I love using like that, like that cool little like rim shot instead of using claps. So we added like I added like a cool rim shot. I called the Travis snare actually, which is crazy. So it kind of just it's dope that he picked the beat because I used you no know, Travis Scott's type of snare. So here's a snare right here. You can hear it all through the beat. And that's it, no, that's his shit. He like that, he like that rim shot. With the rim shot, turn up the reverb, you know what I'm saying? Put a delay on it. You know, I just EQ'd it just right so it can, you know, it hit real hard. You know, it slapped in your face, so. Add the kick under it. You know what I'm saying? Just to, just to give the 808 some punch, you know what I'm saying? Some character. I ain't wanted this to be just straight 808, you know what I'm saying? When you, sometimes you put that kick in it, you know, it gives the beat a little bit more oomph. But then truly, add some cool little hi-hats, I mean, some little perks to it. Everybody knows about the perks. And the perks is just something that you just add, like an accent, you know what I'm saying? Like, whether it's a hi-hat, open hat, my bad, not a hi-hat, but an open hat. Just little stuff just to, Add a little spice to keep the beat moving. Give it legs, you know? I'm gonna break it down like that. And that's really Yosemite, man. It's so simple, you know what I'm saying? A baby couldn't do it, but I did it, you know what I'm saying? We're making it happen. <laughs>